Coming up on the Q30 newscast, a look at the Hamden election results and the new $1 million fund for flooding in Hamden. And a look into how Quinnipiac is celebrating Native American Heritage Month. Plus the Battle of Whitney Avenue this weekend. All this and more coming up on the Q30 newscast. Welcome to the Q30 Newscast. I'm Ben Rekovicius, joined alongside James Blanau. We always look forward to Wednesday night, and it feels great to be back here on the desk. We have lots of news to cover this week, so let's get right into tonight's show. We're starting tonight's newscast with breaking news. A Quinnipiac first-year student was arrested for alleged arson on October 31st, around 5 p.m. on campus. According to the university's public crime, the Hamden Police Department of identified the student as Demetrios Panitopoulos. The Hamden Police public arrest logs show that police responded to Quinnipiac for a report for criminal mischief. Panitopoulos had a $1,000 bond and he is scheduled to appear in Meriden Court on Thursday, November 16th. He is facing charge of reckless endangerment, reckless burning, and criminal mischief. Quinnipiac provided a statement saying the student has been suspended from the university pending their conduct meeting. We applaud our public safety officers and facilities and residential life staffs for their swift response, which led to the student's arrest and removal from the university community. Destructive behavior will not be tolerated. This is a developing story, so stick with Q30 TV for an update. Last night, voters took to the polls. Local election results are in. The Hamden mayoral seat has been decided. That's right. Let's find out who has won the seat. Q30's Julia Barcello has more. I, I've relied so much on all of your support, and it's I'm so grateful for it. You guys all came through. Thank you so much. Lauren Garrett has officially won re-election for mayor of the town of Hamden. She is more than thankful for all the help from her team. Tuesday night, Mayor Lauren Garrett received a total of 6,536 votes, allowing her to begin her second term as mayor. Residents of Hamden have voiced their desire to see a continued improvement of town security and a sense of community. I want to see more money being poured into our police departments to make it safer for people like me, people like you. You should feel comfortable in the communities that you're in. So that's why I think it's important to vote. Mayor Garrett is planning to complete staffing for the Hamden Police Department and continue to make Hamden safer, working closely with the recently appointed police chief, Edward Reynolds. Right now, I think it's important to make sure that he's making all of the different connections and relationships um, as he uh, is coming into Hamden and uh, then making sure that we have the resources that the police department needs. So um, we're close to full staffing um, and, you know, there's still a lot that we have to do to make sure that they have all the tools that they need to um, do their job. Garrett expressed her hope to preserve a unified town and prevent issues like political polarization. We're all neighbors, right? And so I think that it's important that we treat each other that way, that when we're communicating with each other, that we're thinking of each other, you're my neighbor. As discussed during the Democratic primary in September, Garrett is aiming for the modernization of Hamden. We do a lot of work with in IT. So um, our IT infrastructure was in really bad condition. And a lot of what we had to do was rebuilding all of our um, our systems and servers and firewalls and so after doing that we are uh, we've made some updates to our website those updates are um, we're still working through them so making sure that it's easier for people to interact with the town um, a lot of that interaction can be done online we want to make sure that people have that space to do so mayor garrett cannot wait to hit the ground running as soon as today reporting from hamden i'm julie rochello q30 news a brand new dispensary has been pitched to open here in Hamden. The company known as Nutmeg Hamden is looking to open its third location in the state. The store is also looking to include a drive through to increase business, causing concern among some zoning board members. There will also be an extra security personnel, which is not required by state law, but will assist Nutmeg's case for approval by Thanksgiving. The store will only cater to recreational cannabis users and not medical users. Phil Boyce L., the Dean of Frank H. Netter MD School of Medicine announced that Dr. Karen Hook has passed away on October 29th. 
Cook was the Hematology and Oncology Fellowship Program Director and the Section Leader for the Principal of Clinical, Medical, and Delivery of Clinic Care. Her teaching focus was doctor-patient relationships, effective communication skills, and safe patient care. Funeral services were held at the Plainville Funeral Home on Tuesday morning. Earlier this evening, Quinnipiac hosted a guest speaker to help students and staff dealing with trauma from the ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Nitsan Joy Gordon, a peace activist, group facilitator, and therapist, spoke about the role of unhealed trauma, how to inspire empathy, acknowledge conflicts, and help people from both sides speak more open-heartedly. Gordon also founded Together Beyond Worlds, an organization that helps unify those of the Jewish, Islamic, and other faiths to heal and promote understanding. And in the middle of the war, he came to visit me and I asked him, why are the Arabs shooting at us? Are they bad people? Now he said, no, this is in the middle of the war. There are some Arabs and there are some Jews who are bad, but most people are like us and they want to live together in peace. Heading back to downtown Hamden, the town has announced there will be a relief, financial relief investment for the chronic flooding issues. Q30's Ava Crossley has more. The town of Hamden is soon to invest over $1 million into initiatives to reduce chronic flooding. In this July through September, Hamden saw 200% more rainfall than average. The town's pump systems are over four decades old and are unable to handle the current volume of water they are inundated with. The DEEP has awarded half a million dollars to Hamden to replace and study the pump system. These renovations include replacing all the pipes underground and the pump house itself and are therefore expected to take several years to complete. Another such initiative being constructed at the Hamden Town Center Park is a rain garden. According to project's lead Nicole Davis, the 2.5 acre garden is expected to manage over 20 million gallons of stormwater each year from the surrounding drainage area. The garden will not only help with water treatment, but will also restore habitat for native plant species and provide the community with a natural space. Communities in Connecticut, including Hamden, are seeing more rainfall and due to climate change and other impacts. And um, as they're trying to figure out how to reduce those impacts to people who, who live there and work there um, and trying to help reduce, um, you know, damage to property and, and risks to, to people's well-being um they have to they, they're looking for understanding what the problems are and they're also looking for um how do we actually identify these solutions and ultimately put them in place governor ned lamont's office has invested 8.8 .8 million dollars in climate resistance plans and projects such as these which are now being implemented around all of connecticut reporting from quinnipiac i'm evangeline crossley q30 news Hamden's annual Fall Fest is almost here. On November 12th, Pequinock Yacht Club will host many events open to the public. Attendees will be able to participate in early holiday shopping and buy things from local vendors and small businesses. The event will start at 11 in the morning. James, it's almost time to take our first break of the night, but before we do so, it's kind of getting a little chilly recently, so quick look at weather. Yeah, I know I've been noticing the same thing, so let's do it. Joining us now for a look at the three-day forecast is Q30's own Keenan Mills. Thanks, guys. As you can tell this morning, it was getting chillier, and as we can see right here, it's getting chillier and chiller each and every day, whether you like it or not. As you can see right here, the high was 49 today. It got down to 36, not quite the uh, freezing temperatures there, but Tomorrow it's going to be a little bit rainier. We're going to get our rainy jackets on. Maybe those winter jackets, although the high is getting up to 59, so it's going to be a little warmer out there, but the low will stay the same at 36. Over here to end the week, it's going to be up to 51 degrees. So coming down a little bit after 31 and the low comes up a little bit. So we're not getting those freezing temperatures yet, but we'll see what the rest of the week gets us next week after this break. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the table. No way. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org.
I know what you're thinking. I need a job. I need a new career. Well, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I wasn't happy with what I was doing. After high school, I didn't have a plan. I just wanted to start working. I got laid off twice. But you got to keep going. You just need the right skills. Find an apprenticeship. I found a two-year IT program. I found a medical course online. I'm now a consultant in the tech space. You have more options than you think. You can do this. You will find something. You will find something new. Welcome back to the Q30 Newscast. Thanks for sticking with us. A Quinnipiac professor and student organization leader held a teach-in centered around the importance of Native American Heritage Month. Earlier this week, Q30 Sydney Weimer has more. Since 1990, the United States has recognized the month of November as Native American Heritage Month, and the Quinnipiac community is coming together to honor the occasion. Every year, students and faculty at the university participate in on-campus events that are held to recognize the indigenous population. This Tuesday, a teach-in was hosted on main campus in the Carl Hansen Student Center, where students could openly attend and learn about Native American heritage and its cultural importance. Multiple speakers, as well as professors, were united to recognize the occasion. At Quinnipiac University, we have an obligation um, to really critically think about our relationship to this land and our name, which are the traditional homelands of the Quinnipiac people. Um, and that's the name that we use, you know, as our university on all of our branding. Members of Quinnipiac's very own Indigenous Student Union also spoke upon the importance of recognizing the Indigenous community educating people about the land that we're on and I think that in Connecticut especially disregarding the fact that we have there's I think a couple of federally recognized tribes and five state recognized tribes I mean the average student when you talk to them doesn't know anything about the history of the Quinnipiac. Making the time and the effort to listen like especially if you're in like a history class to learn about the actual history of what happened and not just like assuming because a lot of times I feel like our high school based knowledge from it is a lot smaller than our college-based knowledge. The representation is not limited to the month of November, as information about Native culture and history can be found year-round in the Albert Schweitzer Institute at Quinnipiac. With Thanksgiving just around the corner, the Arnold Bernard Library on main campus will also soon showcase an exhibit as part of a 10-point plan, informing students on the historical value of Native culture on the holiday. So throughout the rest of the month, make sure you are taking extra time to honor Native culture and history. Coming to you from the Albert Schweitzer Institute at Quinnipiac University, City Weimer, Q30 News. Quinnipiac business students are finding real-world applications from the latest guest speaker. The M&T Bank Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship hosted Dan Bubniak, an experienced entrepreneur and ambassador to the Global Student Entrepreneur Awards competition. Bubniak spoke to students regarding leadership and entrepreneurship values from his experience in business leadership positions. Bovniak has served as COO, CFO, and co-owners across small businesses in the Northeast. So I learned really quickly that creating a business is really simple and that what you're ultimately trying to do is what is there a gap out there? Like what do people want but that they can't afford or don't have? And what you're doing is simply saying, I have a, a theory around how I can solve that problem. That, that's ultimately what business was, and it, it, it unlocked my understanding that it's really not that complicated to come up with an idea that really fills a hole in the market. Michael Donahue, who is the founder of Journey Apparel, spoke about mental health-related topics on Tuesday night. Donahue is a national service manager at ADES Australia. He shared his story about his mental health journey and how he overcame his struggles. The event lasted two hours and had a raffle and food provided symptoms of what the person is experiencing but if we can see some of these things once again it allows us to have that conversation check in with them and support them as best as we possibly can now ben we've been through quite a bit of news so far but i think it's time to switch things up well i have just a solution for you we have samantha shaw here to fill you in on the latest political news take it away thanks ben and james the political landscape is always moving so let's jump right into it New York City Mayor Eric Adams' 2021 campaign is under investigation for possibly conspiring with the Turkish government to receive illegal foreign donations. On Thursday morning, officials conducted a search of Adams' chief fundraiser, Brianna Sugg's Brooklyn apartment, leading Adams to cancel important meetings in Washington, D.C. regarding the migrant crisis. Multiple files and electronic devices were confiscated as evidence, but there is yet to be any indication of misdeed on the mayor's part. Staying in New York, former President Trump's fraud trial continues in the courtroom. 
Former President Donald Trump and his lawyers broke out in an argument with New York Judge Arthur Engeron during the New York civil fraud trial involving the Trump Organization this past Monday. According to the New York Times, when testifying about his knowledge of fraudulent financial statements filed by the Trump Organization, Engeron urged Trump's lawyers to manage his excessive answers, leading Trump to accuse Engeron of ruling against him. This provoked the judge to remind Trump that the courtroom was not a place for political rallies. And lastly, on Monday, former GOP Representative Peter Meyer announced that he is joining the Michigan Senate race. Meyer took this news to X, formerly known as Twitter, expressing his excitement for his campaign and shared his official statement saying, quote, We considered every aspect of the campaign and are confident we have the best chance of taking back this seat for the Republicans and fighting hard for a conservative future, end quote. The seat is currently held by Democratic Senator Debbie Stabenow, and she will retire when her term ends in 2025. The competitive race for the Republican primary includes former Michigan Representative Mike Rogers, former Detroit Police Chief James Craig, along with other candidates. That's all for this week's political updates. Now back to you guys at the desk. Thanks for the updates, Sam. We have to take our first break of the night. I'm sorry, our next break of the night, but don't go anywhere because we have so many stories to cover. When we come back, the National Alliance on Mental Health had a keynote guest speaker on Tuesday night. And Keenan Mills returns for the rest of our weekly weather update. We'll be right back. Honey, what I think you need is a socket wrench. I played JV basketball. I'm sorry. I don't think it looks right. This is good, and it's all is good, it, baby. Is it really all good? If you love me enough to routinely test your handyman skills, not to mention the strength of your marriage, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. I'm going to call my dad. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. We are going to jump right back into this week's weather. We have Keenan Mills here yet again with everything you need to know. Keenan, let's hear it. Thank you guys. It's very nice of you to welcome me back. We went over the Monday, Tuesday, or the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, excuse me, with the 49, 36. It was cloudy today. Showers with 59 and 36 tomorrow. A little bit of overcast on everyone's favorite day on Friday with a high of 51 and a low of 38. But Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, how about the weekend? Do you want to go? Hike the Giant will go for it because we got a high of 49 and a low of 33. So if you're going to do that, bring maybe a jacket. It gets pretty windy up there, but it will be sunny, sunny skies up there. Similar things on, on Sunday. It's going to get a high up to 44, so a little bit colder, but it will reach below freezing for the low. Moving into next week for Monday and Tuesday, that's where it's going to get really cold with a high of 45 and a low of 25. So it's going to be freezing when you're going to your morning classes, but make sure you have your hoodies on. 49 and 32 is it for Tuesday. We'll take a look at around the Nutmeg State. Let's go into Connecticut. Looking at Torrington, 54, 34 there. It's pretty, it's colder up north. 59 is a high in Danbury. 37 is the low. Moving more south, tomorrow it's going to be rainy in New Haven, but a high of 60. So it's going to be a little warm there. And then 61 will be the high in Stamford. Up in our state's capital is 55 is the high and it's going to be rainy over there and then looking at Norwich and New London the high is going to be 58 and 56 there with a low of 34 and 37 so maybe some rain around the state but not too freezing temperatures yet Ben and James I'll send it right back to you guys at the desk thanks for the update Keenan artificial intelligence experts held an hour-long conversation today about the future of AI and the workplace the discussion explored how technology is impacting businesses and creating new job opportunities the panel was made up of many different experts in career development, including Maggie Holsey, who is an act executive vice president at Indeed, and David Shearwood, who is a managing director at Daylow. So 
I think that AI's push for data and for data to be structured and very carefully looked at in many, many more areas of, of business and of um, in salary and HR and other functions is actually going to help in the long run with some of the inequities that have been there for a long time, but there was no way to actually shine a light on them as directly. Well, James, we got an update on politics. We got an update on weather. What should we talk about next? You know, how about some national news? Maddox Ward is here to talk to us about the biggest stories around the country. Take it away, Maddox. Thank you, Ben and James. Sam Bankman Freed, founder of what was once considered the largest crypto exchange in the world, has been found guilty on all seven charges of fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering. On Thursday morning, the Manhattan jury took only four hours to convict the former CEO of FTX <laughs> for stealing close to $10 billion of customer assets and using it to ease his risky investments, purchase real estate, fund political campaigns, and receive celebrity endorsements for the company. FTX's decline started in November of last year when a leaked document revealed that $8 billion of customer funds was nowhere to be found. That same week, the price of FTX tokens plummeted, forcing the $40 billion company to file for bankruptcy nine days later. Bankman Freed could be facing a potential 115 years in prison, with his sentencing scheduled for March 28th of next year. The father of 21-year-old Robert Cremo III, who was accused of killing several people during a parade in Highland Park, Illinois last year, pleaded guilty on Monday to seven felony charges of reckless conduct. Prosecutors say that 58-year-old Robert Cremo Jr. was responsible for signing his son's firearm application for an ownership identification card. At 19, Cremo III purchased a semi-automatic rifle and fired over 80 rounds from a rooftop and into the parade, killing seven people and injuring 48. He was charged with 117 counts of first-degree murder, attempted murder, and aggravated battery. This week, the Lake County State's Attorney Eric Reinhardt agreed to a plea deal, with the father now being sentenced to 60 days in jail, two years of probation, and must complete 100 hours of community service. Additionally, he's required to give up his own firearm ownership card and any weapons that he still owns. Motor vehicle giant Toyota has declared another recall, this time for over 1.8 million RAV4 model manufactured from 2013 to 2018. The recall is due to concerns that the replacement 12 volt batteries were not properly secure. The company sa states that the dimensions between the original batteries and the replacements vary in size. And if the hold down clamp isn't tightened correctly, the car has a chance of catching fire while making aggressive turns. This comes on the heels of another recent Toyota recall when 750,000 Highlander models were recalled due to the front bumper easily detaching from the car after minor collisions. Toyota dealerships plan to replace the faulty parts for the vehicle with updated ones, free of charge, starting in late December. That's all I have for this week's installment of National News. Back to Ben and James at the desk. It's time to take our final break of the night, but when we come back, we have some big sports stories coming up. Men's ice hockey takes on bitter rivals Yale this weekend. Hear what our analysts have to say. And we'll also have the biggest stories this week in Quinnipiac Athletics as Ryan Raggio breaks it all down. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a unique mix of all kinds of things. Come on, Jules, spot on this last one. Uh, there it is. He's gone with it. Leo! <laughs> they're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Meet the scam. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. What do you think you're doing, Kevin? I uh, was just gonna drive home. Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, there are several warning signs present that you shouldn't be driving. Like hearing voices? Like your text to emoji ratio? 
Oh man, the selfies. <laughs> Selfie nailed it. We all have warning signs that let us know that we're probably not okay to drive. Mine is pretending to be your subconscious. Craig, come on man, let's put a ride home. Thanks for sticking with us. Now it's time for our favorite part of the show, James, sports. We're both pretty big sports enthusiasts, Ben, but we had to go all out. Our favorite club athlete, Ryan Raggio, is here to break down the best stories this week. What do you have for us, Ryan? Thanks, guys. Hearing that really warms my heart, but let's hit the turf. The women's soccer team took home some hardware this past weekend. Quinnipiac defeated Fairfield 1-0 on Sunday in the MAC championship game. The team's leading scorer, Courtney Chokel, scored the game-winning goal just 50 seconds into the game. The brick wall has been the Bobcats' defense roared throughout the game as they held the Stags to a mere three shots on goal, but nothing hit in the back of the net. The win gives the Bobcats an NCAA tournament berth for the second year in a row. Quinnipiac will face number three-ranked Brown in the first round of the tournament. Now, after being bounced in the second round, Quinnipiac will look to advance further this year. Now... Heading on to the hardwood, let's, let's hit the volleyball court. Women's volleyball team went on 1-1 one one this, in this weekend's games. Starting with a tough 3-1 to loss to Maris, the Bobcats bounced back against Siena with a 3 to nothing shutout win. Quinnipiac sits in second place in the MAC, which is a game behind the first place Fairfield. Quinnipiac holds a 17-8 overall record and a 13-3 record in the MAC. The Bobcats round out the remainder of the season with two in-conference games on the road against Ryder and St. Peter's. And that's all I have from sports. Back to you guys on the desk. Thanks, Ryan. You know, it's Yale week, a pretty big week for Quinnipiac Athletics and the men's hockey team. Yeah, that's right. And we have Q30's Clever Strikes to break down this year's matchup from outside M&T Bank Arena. Thanks, James and Ben. I'm up here on the York Hill campus in front of M&T Bank Arena. And while things may be quiet right now, there's a roar coming to the bank this weekend that's sure to wake any sleeping giant as Quinnipiac takes on Yale in the annual traditional rivalry game known as the Battle of Whitney Avenue. Quinnipiac, coming off of a national championship, comes into this rivalry game after a mixed start in ECAC play, including a shootout loss and tie to Dartmouth and a defeat over Harvard this past weekend. They play Brown and Yale, but the big focus remains on the Battle of Whitney Avenue. Now, we saw Bobcat Nation pack the bank back in October against Boston College in the season opener when Quinnipiac raised the national championship banner, a sold-out crowd of 3,700 on hand, a new attendance record. It might be even crazier for this battle of Whitney Avenue. There's always high demands for the Quinnipiac and Yale game as student organizations host fundraisers and drives and have contests to be able to see which lucky students will be able to sit in the student section and be a part of that raucous crowd for this rivalry game between the two teams only separated by 11 miles. Now back on the ice, Keith Elaine's Yale squad has struggled a bit this year, starting out the season 1-2, and two, their lone win coming against Brown in an overtime victory to kick off the slate. As for Quinnipiac, they are 1-0-1 in ECAC play as they still struggle to find their footing after non-conference losses to UNH and Maine to kick off their season. Both of these teams coming into play for a very important trophy that is called the Heroes Hat. It all started when Joseph Muscali lost his life fighting in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. He was a New York City firefighter, and his family donated his firefighter's helmet. The winner of each Battle of Whitney Avenue game receives that hero's hat. It's a great honor for Quinnipiac, and they'll want to pick up some important ECAC points in the Battle of Whitney Avenue. The puck drops at 7 p.m. on Saturday night, and if you cannot catch the action live, it'll also be streamed on ESPN+, and we'll have the call on theqbsn.com slash listen. Reporting on York Hill outside of M&T Bank Arena, Clever Streich for Q30 News. Well, James, Quinnipiac announced that the Bobcat Challenge has raised over $944,000 for Quinnipiac athletes. This year was the first time 100% of varsity student athletes made gifts to their programs. More than 2,700 donors sent money to 21 Division I Quinnipiac teams. There were two donors that were larger than $350,000. That's pretty impressive, James, if you yeah, ask me. It really is impressive, the amount of money that these programs have been raising. Well, Ben, we're all out of news for the night. Thank you for watching this edition of the Q30 Newscast. Stay up to date on all of our content and follow us on social media, Q30 News and Q30 Television. Also visit us on our website at Q30TV.com. From the producers and everyone behind the scenes, I'm Ben Rickavicious. Join alongside James Blonell. That has been the Q30 Newscast. Have a great night.